Hi grade nines, um, for some reason it records better when it's in presenter view, so sorry about this, but no worries, I'm sure you guys will be able to see. Okay, so you guys had to do this for homework um, by drawing the pictures. And I told you guys, remember that for the formation of water, you have to keep in mind that hydrogen and oxygen are both diatomic molecules. So we start off by saying water is 2Hs and oxygen is 2Os. We're not always going to draw these, it's just for now until you guys are into the swing of balancing equations. And then H2O looks like this. Okay, so now we are literally counting the red or the green dots. So on the left hand side, we've got two red dots and on the right hand side, we've got two red dots. So we're going to leave that as is for now. But when it comes to the green ones, then on the left hand side, we've got two and on the right hand side, we've got only this one. Now, we can't just draw in another one and leave it as is because remember, since it's water, it's H2O, it has to have that as well as two hydrogens attached to it. So now if you count the green ones on the left hand side, there's two green dots and on the right hand side, there's two green dots. But now because we changed it, we have to go back to the red one. So on the left hand side, we've got two on the right hand side, we've got four. So yeah, I need to add. Ugh, no, that's not good. Add another two. Okay. And now, if we go and change the numbers in front, remember you can't change these small numbers, you can only change the big numbers in front. So we've got one, two of these, so there's two of them, only one of these, so we don't put a one there, we're happy with that, and one, two of these. And that leaves us with a balanced equation. Now, see there is the balanced equation. So the small number, is in the elements and it tells you how many of them there is in the molecule and the big number in front of the molecule tells you how many of that type of molecule is involved in the reaction so you can only change the big number in front the small numbers the only times that you are allowed to change those is when you are writing down your equation initially so initially when you're writing it down you just make sure that you have all of your diatomic elements or has that little two there and if you know the formula of the molecule, then you write it down with this little subscript 2 or subscript 3 or whatever. But then after that, once you start balancing the equation, you're not allowed to ch change anything at all. Okay, so we're going to practice a few. It says here, iron and oxygen react to form iron 3 oxide. Now, I gave you this molecule's formula there, so you don't have to worry about it too much. So iron, we know, is Fe plus oxygen forms iron oxide. Okay, now before we start balancing, there's something wrong there. The first thing you need to look at is the fact that oxygen is always diatomic. Okay, and then another thing is just to make sure that you guys are understanding what's going on here. If I'm looking at reactants, in this case, iron and oxygen will be classified as the reactants and the product will be iron oxide. Now, we'll get back to iron oxide, magnesium oxide and copper oxide later on. And um, that's actually the next part of the work that we're doing is when metals react with oxygen and form metal oxides. Um, so you will have to know that iron oxide is Fe2O3. But for now, let's just copy it from there because we're actually not practicing that right now okay so i'm going to draw them you guys will see after a while we're going to stop drawing them it's just for you to get the idea of what's going on so this one looks a bit wild but don't worry about it i'm just gonna give you more or less an idea of what's happening here um so i use the orange as the iron and red as oxygen Okay, so immediately we see we have one iron on the left hand side and we've got two ions on the right hand side, so I definitely need another one here. 
Remember, they're not diatomic, so I can't go and draw them next to one another. So now those are balanced. But now when it comes to the oxygen, we have a problem because there's two over here and three over here. So I'm going to have to take both of those to six. That's the smallest multiple that they have in common. So to get them to six, it means that I have to add two more of these to make this three times two. Remember, because I have three of these whole molecules and each of the molecules contains two. So then I've got six of them on the left hand side. And on this side, I'm going to have to take it from three to six. So I'm going to have to multiply that by two. In other words, I need two of these whole molecules. I'm going to draw them for you. Then you can count the red dots. You'll see there's six there then. Like that. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So then I've got six here of them as well. Okay, so that solves our problem for the oxygen, but now we need to go back to the iron. So if we're looking at the iron, you've got two times two in our products. So there's one, two of them in the one molecule, three, four of them in the other molecule. And on this side, I've only got one, two on the left hand side. So I'm going to add two more of them. You guys see they're not attached to one another. So I've got four ions before. And if you go and count afterwards, you say, you look at this two. So I've got two of them in each of my molecules and I've got two whole molecules. So in total, I've got four. Remember our rule is you can't create or um, destroy the molecules or the atoms. Um, we simply have to balance it. So in the end, this balanced reaction, I'm just going to rewrite it here at the top just to make it neat for you guys. The whole reaction will be four of the ions reacts with three of the oxygens to form two of the iron oxides. Okay, now when we get to magnesium and oxygen, this one is actually a bit easier. We should have started with this one. Okay, let's make magnesium green. Oxygen, we're going to stick to red, just for consistency. And remember, it's diatomic. And this time, I gave you the formula of magnesium oxide. Like I said, in... By the time you guys write a test, I actually will expect of you guys to know that magnesium oxide is one magnesium to one oxygen. But we'll get to that. Oh, the one doesn't want to rub out. Anyway, okay. So when we're looking at the magnesiums, as they are at the moment, we've got one on the left hand side, one on the right hand side. So we're happy with that. But now when we look at the oxygens, we've got two on the left-hand side and two on the right-hand side. So I have to add a whole molecule on this side to balance that out. Okay, so now, for now, my red ones are balanced. You always check all of them afterwards again. Now I'm going back to my green ones. I've got one on the left-hand side for my reactants, one magnesium and two on the right hand side with my products. So I'm going to add another one here as well. It's not a whole molecule that you're bonding together. It's just an element standing on its own. So I've got one, two of these, one oxygen, and two of the magnesium oxides. Okay, and then the last one, let's make copper blue, because copper actually is blue when it's in water. Let me just first write it down. Copper oxide it looks like that. This one is actually going to be very similar to the one we did before this. So I've got one copper reacting with one diatomic oxygen. Remember, you have to know that it has two there to form a copper oxide. 
Okay, for now we are happy with the blue ones because blue and blue cancels out one on each side, but we have a problem with the red ones because I've only got one on the right hand side with my product, but I've got two on the left hand side with my reactants. So I'm going to add another one here, which means I have to go and rebalance my coppers again. And now if you look at that, you've got two coppers with the reactants, two coppers in your product, two oxygens in your reactants, and two oxygens in your, pro in your product. So this is then the balanced equation for that. Okay, grade nines, I'm going to give you guys homework. Um, and I'm uploading this video onto your classroom. So if anything happened too quickly for you, please spend some time, make sure you copy everything into your book. And then that will be your homework. Topic two, that's on the little page that I handed out for you guys that all of you received and hopefully didn't throw away. So we are done with topic one. This is topic two, questions one to four, please, for homework for tomorrow. Thank you.